Is it stressful to be a part of the TV film sync licensing business? This is a really great question. And, you know, it made me actually have to think about it a little bit because I've really, truly enjoyed my 11 years in this business. Um, definitely have been a lot of downs and a lot of doubts and a lot of uh, rejections and disappointments. Um, so, and a lot of times feeling like I was led in the wrong direction. So, yeah, I'm not going to say it was a completely smooth ride and everything was hunky-dory. There were a lot of challenges along the way, but in terms of it being stressful, you know, that word stressful, I think there are usually, there's usually a negative connotation to that because most people are thinking about probably a day job, right? That they don't really love working at. Maybe you have a day job that you don't really love working at. And so when you get stressed out at a place that you don't love, uh, it really makes you hate it even more um, and that you have maybe a boss breathing down your neck or tight deadlines or something like that. So I can totally relate to that's why stress usually gets this sort of negative connotation. But uh, to me, stress can also mean just a challenge, right? It can it just means something where if I'm laying down watching TV, I'm not really stressed out. I'm just kind of relaxing, right? Now, if I'm working on a track, um, I might come across some part of my production process where I'm stuck and I don't know how to get past it. I don't know what kind of lead I should throw in there, what kind of a transition. So there's stress coming to me, right? Because now I have a challenge. I'm not exactly sure how to fix it. It's basically, I always see it as like a Rubik's cube in front of me and I haven't quite figured this one out. I don't know how to put the pieces together to move forward with this track or whatever it is, whatever process that I'm working on, right? Or whatever problem I have. So in terms of that kind of stress, you'll have tons of that, right? That's basically a day-to-day, hour-to-hour sort of situation. But the more that you run into these situations where you get stuck, maybe writer's block, right? The common things that we all go through as producers, the more often you get to them and push right past them. I mean, just really just force your way right through them, figure out a way to get past your obstacles, uh, the less they sort of stress you out, right? They become just more, you know, smaller obstacles, smaller challenges. I don't even, obstacles, I think it's even too harsh of a word. It's more like a puzzle. Like I, I usually uh, imagine these kind of things of, I don't know how to put this chorus with this verse. This is, these are two puzzle pieces. I don't know how the connecting piece is going to be, right? Maybe I need to have a whole new section in the middle. Maybe just a simple pause and a drum fill can get me there or a, a riser, a sound effect. A lot of different ways that I can do that, right? Some stuttering. So I just see it as a puzzle that has not been completed yet, right? Just as simple as that. And when I view it this way, it's not um, stressful in a negative way. It's stressful in the very positive way that I feel invigorated by a challenge. And maybe just, I think, maybe musicians and producers, we probably all share a little bit of this where we are invigorated by the sort of constant challenge of music. Music is one of those art forms that you can't really put your hands around and say, I have mastered it, I've got it all down. Uh, every day you're getting schooled. Every day when you think you've got everything figured out, something teaches you, no, you really could go even above and beyond. You could experiment with a new way to produce music. You could try a new sound. You know, there's always something that can basically teach you and school you uh, and to improve your craft. And so that's what continuously has drawn me back to this business for 11 years is Number one, I love just making music, and that's what I want to do every single day. There's really nothing else I would really like to do for the most for most of my time, right? But number two, what's really cool about the single licensing business is I don't have to be pigeonholed into one sound, one style, you know, um, and have basically, as opposed to when you're an artist with you know tens of thousands of fans or hundreds of thousands of fans, they sort of expect the same thing from you every time you release an album. I hear some of these artists that have been around in like since the '90s. They, they release an album and it's like, man, you guys are writing the same. It's like you didn't ever evolve. Like you just wrote the same style. And I think some of that's fear from a lot of producers and musicians that might be on that side that they feel I don't want to venture out too much because I think we'll alienate our fan base. And so we have to kind of stay stuck here. This is our thing. This is what we're really good at. Um, I mean, if they love making that music, great for them. But I, I have to imagine there's got to be a lot of artists out there that don't feel very fulfilled or um, uh, challenged because they've got their formula. They got the thing that works and they just have sort of gotten off the train, the progress train, and they're just gonna sit there and that's gonna be their sound every single time. Um, but what's really cool in sync uh, licensing is that if you have, let's say, um, I don't know, even you do something just hip hop, right? Hip hop you do, uh, but even within hip hop, you can do trap, you can do orchestral hip hop, you can do rock hip hop, you can do minimal hip hop, you can do tension hip hop. I mean, there's like so many different styles that you can go in and so, if you're getting a little burned out on one style or one sort of approach to hip hop, just switch it up. You know, obviously talk to your library that you're working with and try to find out if it's going to be licensable, useful for them. But what I've loved about this business and why it's basically never pushed me so far away that I felt completely stagnant 
is that one factor is that I have this flexibility to kind of move in between many different styles and sounds. Um, but again, big disclaimer, I don't recommend if you're brand new to the business to get involved with five different styles of music, five different genres, stick to one or two that you're really, really good at, that you love, that you can grow with. And later on down the road, you will evolve into other genres. Tr mark my words, like once you get into this, probably two, three years down the road, you will have your library partners asking you, hey, do you do anything else? We need some other music here and there. And if you're reliable, guess who they're coming to for all those kind of requests, right? That will come down the road. But in the beginning, really find your niche. Find that one sound that you really can nail and it's high quality and it's licensable and it's applicable for the libraries that you submitted to. As long as you have those things covered, then you can obviously branch out from there. But even with that one genre, that one style that you're going for, as I mentioned before, you've got options. You're really not pigeonholed into one thing. Um, in terms of the bigger stress points, it's really about the royalties. I mean, that's really been when I think back on the times that I've really been um, the most invigorated and the most demotivated, it's when that royalty check hits. We get we get paid uh, once a quarter, so we only get four paychecks a year. Uh, if you're with ASCAP, you'll get those two checks. You'll get ASC, you'll get um, domestic and international, so they're two different checks. Uh, but with BMI now that I've been a member with, we get one check a quarter. And the night before that check hits, I'm either, I mean, I'm always excited, but then there's always this like gut, you know, uh, sort of burning feeling in the bottom of my, my gut that it's just gonna be disappointing. Cause I've had so many of those in my career, especially in the first couple of years when I was expecting to see larger numbers, didn't quite see them as fast as I wanted to, okay? Um, and then some quarters I woke up and saw way more money than I ever thought I'd ever earn uh, in licensing. And so it's like, you know, I've had just sort of the extreme ends of both. And of course you have a lot in the middle that are like, okay, that's pretty good. It's a little bit on the disappointing side, but not bad. Or that's actually nice. That's a little bit bigger than usual, but not like, oh my gosh, incredible. But getting those royalty checks is, when I think back, those are the times where I really had to stare in the mirror for a couple of minutes um, and really think about if I wanted to keep going with this business. That's probably been the highest stress point of this industry is you're, you're cranking out. And I, this is why I empathize with all of you guys that are brand new to this because you're cranking out hour after hour, month after month for maybe a year or two before you see really any money. You might see some upfront consideration fees, but really those back end royalties, they take a long time to finally start to generate and pile up in your account. And when you've been working, let's imagine you're working at a job for two years and you get your first paycheck and it's, you know, 300 bucks, 500 bucks. You know, it takes a really strong person to have to look at that and, or a crazy person, <laughs> maybe I'm just crazy, but it takes something to look at that and go, I know that's not what I was hoping for. And I really think I have, I need, I need more than that, obviously to live. And I think I'm going in the right direction and I have to just double down on this. I really got to keep going into this. If I'm seeing any results, I, if something is working, I got to keep going at it. Um, that's why this industry is not for all producers and not all people. Because a lot of people, I think most people would see that result and go, failure doesn't work, right? I don't know if I can say they're right or wrong because I don't know if their music is very licensable. I don't know if they're partnering with great libraries. I mean, there's so many other factors or how often they're submitting their tracks to the libraries and getting them distributed, right? So there's so many factors on there. So if you're not approaching this light, this this, uh, this industry the right way, maybe after two years, if that's all you're seeing, it might be a sign that either you really got to radically shift things up or maybe this is just not the industry for you. It's just not working out for your skill sets and for your, your schedule. That's why in all of my videos, if you guys have been following me for a while, I really try to not get you guys so steered on how much money can you make? How big are the checks? How this, how that? That stuff is, um, I know that's motivating, all right? I don't wanna discount the fact that like looking at your future income stream is not, you know, that, that's definitely gonna be a motivating factor. But that is not going to come unless your current schedule, your day-to-day, -day, week to week, month to month schedule is systemized and it works in a way where you could consistently crank out high quality licensable music every single day, every single week. If you're not doing that now, you're, you're and you're just thinking like, well, what about the money? What about the money? What about the money? Just know this, it is certainly possible to make full-time income with sync licensing. That is definitely possible. And and then some, there's definitely people who are killing it in this business, you know, six figures plus. That's not the issue. The issue I think for most producers, especially brand new to this, is not getting ahead of yourself, not putting the cart in front of the horse and thinking about all of that stuff down the road, but really focusing on what you can do in your life right now. Take ownership, take responsibility, accept the power that you have right now. All of that other stuff, a lot of that's out of your control, a lot of that's out of your power. But what you do with your day-to-day -day life and your schedule and your production, that's not so. Um, anyways, I know I got a little bit off topic here about the stress of this business. So, but I hope you can see just you know by the way that I talk about it, 
it's it has it has only added to my life enjoyment this entire business it has not uh been a complete you know downer because i've heard of and i've definitely seen those interviews with artists and bands that are talking about going through the record label system and feeling that their soul was ripped from their hearts and they just have no creative energy left anymore and they're just beaten and broken on the ground i mean i i, I hate to hear those stories it's very common though um I don't feel anything like that. I don't feel any, nobody has ripped anything from me. If anything, I've only been enriched by this industry. I've only been improving my production skills, my knowledge of music, my uh, just love and appreciation for the craft of making music. And then also just feeling that sort of competence and confidence of my music is professionally being placed. I'm making my living from my music. You know, I don't know. Again, it's hard for me to even put any of that into words, what that really feels like. But, you know, imagine what it would feel like for you. That's what it would feel like. Okay. It's just a really, really cool thing. So anyways, I hope that helps uh, answer that question. And I hope this either <laughs> encourages you to keep going with sync licensing, or maybe it scares you completely off uh, that you don't think this is going to be something you want to spend a couple of years uh, pursuing. So let me know, put a comment below. Did this encourage you or did it kind of scare you off? I'd like to know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, please. I do appreciate that.